This year, the six annual Winter X Games were held in Aspen. The first action star I caught up with was Ben's Leslie Olson. Snowboarding star Leslie Olson knows how to shred the competition. She was Junior Rider of the Year after the 1994-95 season. The following year, she became the overall Junior World Champion, and by the next season, she was second overall in the world rankings. She's traveled the world, stars in a video game, and is part owner of Chorus Snowboards. And when Leslie isn't on the slopes, you'll find her at all kinds of sporting events, even in Eugene. I'm a big Oregon Duck fan, actually. It's a lot of football games this year. I joined the Duck Club. <laughs> and it's not hard to guess who her favorite duck is. Yeah, he could do anything. <laughs> He's rad. I'm a big Joey Harrington fan. <laughs> and why shouldn't she be a fan of Joey's? They're both comeback kids. You see, even though Leslie Olson won the Border Cross gold medal in the 2000 X Games, today she's just happy to be snowboarding at all. Oh! Olson goes down hard with Simmons over the top! I just want to make it past this contest because last year, I don't know, I almost, I kind of almost died in the Border Cross. Hopefully Leslie's going to be all right. Positive thoughts to Leslie right now. That was heavy. Leslie's father, Gary, remembers what happened at last year's games. I was there at the X Games in Vermont and she hit real hard. Uh, on the flat area and brought it down in a stretcher. We hope that she's okay. But Leslie was not all right. Then she had some breathing problems, so they lifted her over to Dartmouth University Medical School. And she was in the hospital there for two days and lost about nine days out of her life because she uh, wasn't coherent to the point that she remembers what happened in those nine days. It was just one of the... It's just one of the hardest things, and that's why, that's why I came this year, because I wanted to be right here to help support her. But now, after nine months of intense rehab, Leslie is making her comeback at the same event that could have cost her her life. And right there, in blue, Leslie Olsen just made the move into third place. The same doctors that test the NFL and NHL players are giving Leslie the green light to compete. Leslie Olsen now in that hot seat. And the Olsen support Leslie whatever she decides. When she left for the airport, she still said, Mom, I'm not sure that I'm going to do this. Leslie Olsen right now is holding down the third place spot in blue. It's real hard of me to come to a competition because like any mom, you know, you, you worry about what could happen. And then when something does happen, it's, it's a real tough thing. Everyone's kind of mi has mixed feelings, like maybe I shouldn't do it or maybe I should. Here, to double or not to double. Carly Jeffries goes for the double and goes down, casing. When the racers flew through the course and crossed the finish line, Leslie was with them. She advanced all the way to the semifinals. Uh, what happened was is that she decided she wanted to do it and got over a big hurdle today. I got over a big hurdle too. Leslie didn't make it to the finals, but she's only 23, and she knows she's got a lot of boarding left in. You get to travel all over the world, get paid to do something I love, and then live in Bend. It's amazing. I love Bend. And I love Bachelor and um, I don't know, I love going home. <laughs> well, I tell you, I got the opportunity to meet a snowboarder from Salem. Her name is Michelle Taggart, and I got to tell you, she's funny, bright, and overall, a great ambassador for the sport. I am from Salem, Oregon. <laughs> I've been in it for a long, long time, and in the sport forever, and kind of, I guess, a legend of the sport. Michelle Taggart has been carving a name for herself and the sport of women's snowboarding for over 10 years. Back in 88, <laughs> um, I got into snowboarding, and it was when the sport was still kind of young, and would skip school. I would just school at South Salem High and would uh, skip school with Robbie Morrow and go up to uh, Hoodoo for the day and go snowboarding. A year later, Michelle was skipping volleyball practice at Oregon State to become a world champion. My dad's a duck fan, but I was a beef, so go bees. <laughs> and earning her degree in snowboarding. I've learned a lot. I mean, basically, it's been a college for me. I've learned marketing and advertising. I've learned communication skills. I've learned so much through this sport that I'm, I'm really grateful for it. And a steel fish on that front side. Snowboarding was considered a young, rebellious sport for many years. But today it's become mainstream with adoring fans and some big money to be made. 
This former Olympian and X Game gold medalist knows how important the X Games are to the sport. We got Michelle Taggart in here signing autographs. What's your name? Mike? Mike. Okay. Want a photo? Back here. Yeah. Okay. okay, say cheese over there. Thank you, Justin. Have fun. To me personally and also to my sponsors, at least for Solomon, that I would imagine that a, an X Games gold medal would be more important than an Olympic gold medal just for the fact that it gets televised like every, all throughout the year. She's really nice. I like her. She's an inspiration, you know, for women to do things that are big. I'm never going to wash my face again. Michelle's been performing in front of the cameras and the crowds for over a decade, but now her career is winding down. And at the age of 31, she's trying to figure out what to do with the rest of her life. But she loves her fans, so instead of riding the super pipe, she may be commentating on it. I'm not sure what I want to do yet, but I'm interested in commentating. I've commentated with ESPN for the last couple years, which was uh, ex an experience for sure. Michelle's skill at arcing smooth turns in the powder and boosting big air in the half pipe have translated into drawing clean lines on Madison Avenue. I've been designing clothes with uh, Polo, with RLX, and that's been uh, really adventuresome. Um, I mean, obviously, the RLX and Ralph knows his fashion, but I've been able to help them with the technical side and the function of the, of the clothing. From State Street in Salem to Madison Avenue in New York. Michelle has stayed an Oregonian at heart. I've been traveling so much for the past, I don't know, 10 years that uh, and I haven't been home to Oregon that much, but when I come home for Christmas or Father's Day or whenever I get a chance to make it home, I just I fall in love all over again. His name is Justin Homan and he lives in Bend. He spends his weekdays at the office, but on the weekends, his business is in the sky. Clean mountain air and gasoline fumes is a mix that somehow just doesn't seem right on the slopes of Aspen, Colorado. And in the extreme world of freestyle motocross, Justin Holman is an oddity as well. I went to UW, got a degree in accounting. I'm the only guy out of the top 20 guys, or even you know, out of any of the guys really, that has that degree. And I have a full-time job. I've worked pretty hard towards a career, and I don't want to give that up. You see, Justin Homan could be considered the Clark Kent of motorcycle freestyle. Monday through Friday, he wears a tie and glasses and works as an accountant in Bend. <laughs> On the weekend, he becomes a superhero of sorts with spiked shoulder pads and a helmet. I've been a real fan of his and, uh, you know, followed his career and, you know, he's the mild-mannered guy here at work and then crazy man on the weekend. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense to most people. First time I ever saw was a picture of him um, over 80 feet in the air on a motorcycle. It, and it was frightening. <laughs> He's definitely the wilder side of our business, although he looks very conservative, doesn't he? <laughs> he walks with a little limp. I think that's indicative of his business, but he didn't get it from a mirror title. Yeah, I like it. I like, you know, I think what we do do on motorcycles primarily is stupid from just a, an objective viewpoint, but. And I have this side where, you know, I'm at work and I got to do my job and do it correctly and, and uh, you know, be a role model in a lot of ways. A career outside of dirt bikes enables Justin to go full throttle and go big. As far as riding goes, I'm definitely one of the core guys. I think I have, I have more balls than any of these guys when it comes down to it. To me, I'm not done unless I'm broke and can't walk. But even Superman has kryptonite to worry about. This accountant is used to crunching more than just numbers. I broke both my wrists at a couple of shows in Salt Lake City last year. I was in the wrong gear because of my paralyzed foot. Yeah, you heard right. Paralyzed foot after an accident two years ago in San Jose. And the bike landed sideways and I popped my hip out. And, you know, doctors say that just doesn't happen. You usually break your femur before you pop your hip out. And they thought I had a broken back and a broken pelvis, and they left my hip out for so long that it killed the nerve that operates the leg. It took Justin nine months to make a comeback. I don't know, kind of a weird perspective that I can get hurt and be in a wheelchair, but I'll still have a good, a good job. And now at the X Games in Aspen, he has to reach down and shift gears using his hand, making an already death-defying sport all the more difficult. 
I do Big Kiss of Das, and I'm, I'm the only guy that does the Holy Man, which is the bungee cord trick. <laughs> Just a 59 cent whatever bungee cord from Big R, and I clip it on my belt. I throw myself off the bike, no hands, no feet. And some might say no brains. There's nothing that I do that I don't. I haven't accounted for in my head, whether it's riding or working. Whether it's pushing a pencil, typing a keyboard, or launching off an icy ramp blasting to the sky, the risk is well worth the reward. I think it's just because I'm a strong competitor and I want to win more than anything else. It's the only reason I'm out here, not to just to be a part of it, but to win. Wait, yeah.